Hello, I'm Charlie Brooker, and you're watching Screen Wipe, a program all about television. Hope you enjoy it. Imagine doing the laundry in a circus. Oh, yeah, or imagine doing the laundry in a submarine full of exploding cows full of paint. You might as f***ing well. The world's a frightening place full of random events that occur for no apparent reason. Little wonder, then, that so many people prefer to pretend it doesn't exist at all and instead wallow in a comforting fantasy realm where death is not the end. But enough about fantasy realms. Thank God for shows like the best of British mediumship for telling it like it is. Death is the greatest lie we're ever told. That's Colin Fry, who looks like a discarded chuckle brother, but is actually one of Britain's top psychics. Can you understand, please, that he's asking me to speak to Leslie? Yes. Your Leslie? Yes. I'm the so, Leslie. Colin's pretty impressive. He gets a lot this right. The image of this pub, the something and anchor. Karen and anchor. What was the scandal over a missing money pot to do with the darts team? Don't think about that. Oh, and some wrong. But he's also talking about the fact that he's met up with a guy by the name of David Gorman. I've never heard of that name. Yeah, that's wrong too. Do you understand what I mean when I say I couldn't have made it the last step of the way without you? I wasn't, I wasn't there. Oh, f*** off, Colin. Most psychic shows are accompanied by a disclaimer like this one for Colin Fry's Sixth Sense that makes it clear they're for entertainment purposes only. So that's why they're making grieving relatives sob entertainment. Of course, this being Space Year 2006, there are other more high-tech ways of getting in touch with the psychic realm thanks to groundbreaking services like Psychic Interactive, which dispenses supernaturally assured advice to any poor sod who texts in. It says, hi, Fran. Can you tell me when I'm going to see John again? Not sure if he's back from Jamaica. He's in the army. I think he's probably back, or if he's not back, he must be on his way home. Now that is amazing. You know, I'm actually starting to believe this. Let me that look, bud. We've got uh, some text messages coming through, so let's see who we've got. We've got Charlie B. Hello, Charlie B. How can I become oh. less gullible? <clears throat> okay, good one. But let's take it back. It's the lower chakras. Chakras. But mostly, you've got the solar plexus, which chakras, is that's below good advice. Your, um, just above your stomach. That's a yellow. Yellow chakra. Have the colour yellow and the colour blue around you a lot more. The oh, blue, this is great the calmness, advice. The yellow for sharpness as well, so you're picking up on people a lot easier. Um, Hang on, yellow and blue. Those colours surround my name in the opening titles. It must be true! Even this little candle or, or, or a small crystal uh, are yellows and, and wearing blue for calmness. OK, so I've lit a candle and I found something blue. It's a carrier bag, but hey, I feel great already. I'm going to thank them for that. Now, this one is from... I think it was Charlie B, I think. Yes, it was. Uh, thanks for your advice and love you guys. Oh, oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Anyway, for my money, the most biscuit-taking psychic around has to be Derek Ogilvy, recently seen in the truly jaw-dropping Baby Mind Reader. 21-month-old Lily is out of control. <laughs> Her daily screaming fits have taken over the life of her mum, Gemma. This man, Derek Ogilvy, says he can read babies' minds. Oh, well, that's reasonable enough. How are you going to do that? I want to talk about food, OK? Mm -hmm. Now she's at a stage that she's almost scared to, instead of using a spoon, use a fork, right? Yes, yes. You've noticed this, haven't yes. you? Because she'll use a fork and then she'll put the fork down and go back to a spoon. Yes. Because she's scared because using the fork... Oh, my God. God! Flippin' egg. I'm not sure if the baby's making him cry or if he's just realised what a mess he's made of his life. Probably took the wrong folk in the road. She's, she's so scared to grow up. She doesn't want to grow up. Well, I can't imagine why you make the adult world seem so rational. Totally nuts. I want to know about the policeman. Anyway, now it's down to Derek to find the root cause of the problem, which he finds slightly difficult at first. You've got a problem with Lily burning herself with water. There's a problem with you and hot water when you were a kid. Do you remember this? No. Was anybody's house broken into recently? No. OK. Anyway, he's tried hot water and burglary and drawn a blank, so what else could be the problem? Just take a break for a minute. She's telling me about a man shouting, a man upsetting you, Gemma. Yes. A man shouting at you, Gemma. Yes. Men who else will smile and be nice to mum and then be horrible. 
and stab you right in the back and leave mum in bits and mum can't pull herself together and mum is a wreck. Yes, it turns out the poor woman's a former victim of domestic violence. Well, let's hope he tackles this gently. The man who wants to touch mum's private and bruise mum. Bruise mum. Bruise mum! This is like blue velvet. Who the fuck are these men in my house? She's saying, she's swearing, she's swearing, she's swearing at me. Yeah, well, babies are notoriously foul mouth. This one just called Derek a prick. That's why we've got a problem today, because people didn't ask Lily if it was all right and really doesn't want men to upset Mum ever again. Actually, I think all Lily wants is for Derek to stop raking up Mum's past in such a fucking despicable way. Do you understand? Bruises, okay. Gemma? Yeah. Bruises, Gemma? Black bruises? Black bruises? Bruises, Gemma? Anyway, having reduced a single mum to tears, Derek formulates a brilliant scheme to help her cope. You need to allow time for yourself. When you take time out, this will help Lily and will also help you. I mean, he could have turned up and just, say, lent her a basic childcare book, but no. Now, I'm not saying that Derek and all the other psychics don't have special abilities. I'm just saying that if they do, all known laws of science are going to have to be rewritten. But then what's science anyway, eh? I mean, who? It's only a rigorously tested, peer-reviewed system of knowledge about the way our world works, built up over centuries, that's all. It's not a patch on mindless superstition, which has been around for far longer and brought us exciting things like ghosts and demons, witch trials and the tooth fairy, and, of course, the baby f mind reader. Here's that effing keys, you fucking bitch. Now here's David Quantic listing his gripes about list shows. The weird thing about clip shows is that this is television, and television is famously a visual medium, hence the name. One of the great things about television, and unlike a book, you don't have to describe things, you can just show them. But clip shows seem to think that they're for the partially sighted as well, because before they show the clip, they will get someone to describe what the clip is. As though it might be so shocking, it needs a kind of viewer warning. Warning, you are about to see the Blue Peter presenters giving some presents to animals at Christmas. I probably remember the presenters giving them to the animals more than each other. You know, the cat got a little play mouse. Warning, you are about to see a photograph of some Essex girls. Essex girls are called Sharon and Tracy and they used to wear white stiletto heels. So if, say, someone had done a show with UB40 in, you would have someone like, say, Emma B, saying... UB40 were a bit weird, really, because they were sort of mainly white guys doing pop reggae from Birmingham. And you think, if you've got to the point in your life when you're watching a clip show about UB40, you're not going to go, oh, my Christ, they were white men from Birmingham playing reggae? Emma B, by the way, in case you don't know, is a woman. Sometimes it's very bizarre. You'll see someone who was, say, a child and talking about events of the 1930s. Kate Thornton did some programme. She's done some of these, apparently. And she started talking about Charlie Perfume. It was this incredibly naff, cheap scent that was so huge during the 70s. She had a whole detailed riff about the smell of Charlie. She must have been two when Charlie was around. I did a show which was something to do with soap opera, and they started asking me about Blake Carrington. Now, I don't really know what show he was in. I think it was Dynasty, and I really didn't care. But the one thing I did know was the colour of his hair, because I could see it on my television. And they asked me to say that Blake Carrington had blue hair. Well, he didn't have blue hair. He had silver-grey hair. And they kept saying, no, can you say Blake Carrington had blue hair? And I said, but he didn't have blue hair. And they said, we know, but it'll be funny. I'm saying, how will it be funny? It'll only be funny to people who think it's funny for someone to say someone has blue hair when they don't. And I didn't say it. So they got my wife to say it. Blake's hair was blue. Can you sing the theme to Screen Wipe? No. Thank you for asking, though. So I don't do theme tunes. You know, it's my only moral point. So, yeah, I've refused to do the theme tune, and they put me in a medley of people doing theme tunes, not doing the theme tune. The Neighbours theme was by Tony Hatch, great man, wrote Downtown, and he wrote the Crossroads theme.